What's going on guys, welcome back. Hope you're doing well. This is gonna be part two of our loops module where we're gonna be talking about something called while loops. So they're very similar to for loops in that they repeat tasks for us, but while loops are conditional. So what does that mean? So a while loop is condition based, meaning it continues as long as a condition is met. So here's a diagram we're gonna go over in a second. The next point is in order for our loop to stop, the condition has to fail. So if you guys remember from our for loops module, the previous one, for loops have a specified range that they run over, whether we define that range using numbers or we iterate over a data structure, right? It has a clear start and stop point. While loops are gonna continue running as long as some condition is true. So let's say, you know, we have some Boolean variable, like while it's daytime, continue running this loop until it's no longer daytime and then the loop will stop, something like that, right? So let's break this, the, take a look at this diagram for a breakdown. So it's gonna say, hey, is this condition true? If the answer is yes, it's gonna continue the loop and then it's gonna go through the code inside of the blocks and then it's gonna ask that question again, is this condition still true? And this will continue until the condition is no longer true and we're gonna exit the loop. So we're gonna be using things like Booleans, comparison operators and logical statements to uh, determine whether or not this loop will continue to run and only until the condition that we specify becomes false will the loop stop. So if that's a little confusing, don't worry, we're about to hop into the code right now and do some examples. So let's go ahead and get Xcode opened up. With Xcode opened up, guys, I'm gonna go ahead and paste some notes in here and also create a new section for your while loops. So this is just what we went over in the, uh, the presentation, right? It's different from a for loop in that it's conditional. And while some condition is met, the loop will continue. It will stop when the condition is no longer valid. So let's go ahead and just dive right into an example. Let's imagine we want to write a program to help us launch a rocket. And we want it to count down from 10. And when it hits zero, then we want it to launch. So we're going to use a while loop to do that. So let's go ahead and create this variable called countdown and set it equal to 10. And now we're actually going to write our while loop. So we're going to say while countdown is greater than zero. Now, whatever is inside of these blocks will execute. That's what's going to repeat in our loop. But I want us to break this down a little bit. So we type out the word while, and that indicates to our compiler that, hey, you're making a while loop. Then what has to follow that is a condition. So this is like, um, you know, using our comparison operator stuff that we talked about back in our operator section. So if you guys remember, we have these comparison operators and these will evaluate to either true or false, right? So if I go back, countdown greater than zero will either give me back a, a value of true or false, right? Right now, countdown is 10. So countdown is greater than zero and the loop will continue to run. Then what I want us to do is every time the loop runs, we want to subtract one from that countdown guy. So we want it to go 10, 9, 8, 7, 6. And then ultimately, once it hits zero, then this condition will no longer be true and the loop will stop running. So let's go ahead and print out our countdown guy. Countdown is countdown. And then we're, we're going to say if... Uh, countdown equals zero. And I think we actually want to change this to greater than or equal to zero. So let's do that up there. And then we're going to say, if the countdown is zero, print launch the rocket. And what we're going to do now at the end of the loop is say countdown minus equals one. So we're going to use one of those compound assignment operators. And we're going to say, hey, every time the loop gets to the end of this guy, we wanna subtract one from the current value of it. So let's go ahead and run this and just see what we get back. And, and then we can uh, like dive through this example a little more. So if you guys look, we see countdown is 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. And then it says launch the rocket and then the loop stops, right? So let's just break this down really quickly one more time. So here's our condition and at the start of the loop, we're printing, hey, this is the value of your countdown. If it's ever equal to zero, it's going to launch the rocket. So this won't print until the last iteration of the loop. And at the end of it all, we say, hey, whatever countdown is, subtract one from it. So on the first iteration, it's 10. And, you know, we get back. Countdown is 10. 
And then on the next iteration, because we subtracted one from that, it's going to equal nine. And then the updated value of countdown is obviously nine. And then it's going to subtract one from that and go to eight, then seven, all the way down to zero. And then once it hits zero, this if statement's going to hit and it's going to say launch the rocket. But after that, countdown is going to subtract from zero and equal negative one. And then when it goes to evaluate that condition, it's going to say negative one is not greater than or equal to zero. Ultimately, that evaluates to false and the loop will stop running. So that's just a quick example of a while loop, guys. Something that you need to be really careful with is with while loops, you can end up running a loop infinitely, right? Like imagine we never modified this countdown variable, then the loop would run forever, right? Because countdown will always be greater than and equal to zero. So we have to make sure in our while loops that at some point in the loop, the condition that we are basing the loop on evaluates to false. If that doesn't happen, we will get an infinite loop and that will crash your program. The loop will just run forever and ever and ever until your program crashes and dies and nobody wants that. So um, that's something you have to be careful with with while loops. Between the two things, when do you want to use one versus the other? It's pretty situational. Um, typically, I use for loops most of the time, to be honest, uh, but while loops do have a time and place. And it really just depends on the program that you're writing, right? Like if you want to base a loop off a condition, use a while loop. If you want to base a loop on running a set number of times, use a for loop. That's the main difference here. For loops run a set or preset number of times, whether it's iterating over a data structure or we define a specific range of values, zero to 10, or loop through this shopping cart array. A for loop will always only ever run a specific number of times. A while loop, however, is conditional, so it will continue to run as long as a condition is true and will only stop once a condition evaluates to false. So that's the big difference between the two. As we go on through the course and you know start doing some more practice problems with all of this stuff and get into app development, we'll see when you wanna use one versus the other. But like I said, for loops are a lot more common. So that's gonna wrap it up for our loops module, guys. You guys are killing it so far and you are really starting to develop the fundamental skills of what it takes to be a programmer. Now, we're gonna be able to start applying this stuff once we get into our app development fundamentals course. And there's just a couple more concepts that we gotta cover before we do that so that we can really hit the ground running once we start building real life mobile apps. So we're almost through the fundamental stuff, guys. Let's keep going, stick with it, and we'll see you in the next module.